and perform it. And the song simply says, I need your glory. And it goes on to say that uh, less of me and more of you is what I need. Is that anybody's prayer and anybody's plea? If it's not, it most certainly should be. However, the truth of the matter is, if we really want the glory of God to come on our lives, uh, we do realize this means that we must surrender our own thoughts, and we must surrender our own attitudes, we must surrender our own wants and desires. Anybody believe that? You know that if you really want the true glory of God to manifest in your life, you've got to give up something. You've got to give up your own uh, thoughts. You've got to give up your own attitudes, your own thoughts and wants and desires. You've got to give it up. Uh, it's time to come before God honestly. Amen. It's time to come before him honestly. What you talking about, Dooley? Well, I'm going to tell you, it's time to come before him and say, well, yes, God, I struggle with this. And yes, God, I'm dealing with that. But I need your glory. And I need your power. And I need your spirit. It's kind of hard for us as human beings to not desire and want to have our own way. It's quiet. And that's all right. That's cool. It's quiet. It's hard for us to not want to have our own way. It's hard for us to imagine uh, having to do things a way other than what we've always been used to doing. But if you really want the glory to God, of God to manifest in your life, uh, you've got to, to, to you, in order for God to increase you, you've got to step out of the way. Uh, John 3 and 30 tells us that uh, he must increase, but I must what? I must decrease. We must literally step out of the way in every way. You've got to step out of the way in every single way that you can. We can't just have the glory of God in just one little section of our lives. We can't just have the glory of God in church. We've got to have the glory, uh, a total drenching of his glory. We've got to have it come on us in every single uh, uh, aspect of our lives. God, I can't fix it. I need your glory. God, I can't afford it. I need your glory. God, I can't get well, so I need your glory. God, the kids are acting a fool. I need your glory. God, I'm unemployed. I need your glory. If you can give him glory, then he will give you the glory. If you, if you need the glory, somebody just say, I need the glory. I need the glory. I don't just need him in my finances. I need it in my health. I don't just need it at home. I need it at work, too. I don't just need the glory in my family. I need it in my friendships, too. I need the Shekinah glory of God to just come and sit and just dwell so that everything is blessed. My body is blessed. My family is blessed. I don't hear nobody, and that's all right. My car is blessed. My job is blessed. My church is blessed. If you need the glory one more time, just shout, I need the glory. glory. Oh, you didn't shout it like you really needed. Somebody ought to throw your hands up and say, I need the glory. Hallelujah. You've got to have it in every area of your life. It doesn't make sense for him to just give you just a drop. I need it to cover everything in my life. I don't know about you, but I need the glory of God to encompass everything. I don't know about you, but I need him. What is it that uh, God wants us to decrease in order for him to increase? Right. Amen. Amen. That's, that's a million dollars. What is it that God wants us to decrease in order for him to increase? Well, God wants us, he wants the desires of our flesh to decrease so that he may increase and give us the desires of our heart. Amen. Psalms 37 and 4 says, delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. God knows what it is you want, Sister Grayson. And God knows what it is, Latasha, that you need. He didn't just say that he'll give you your desires, but it went just a little bit further and said that he will give you the desires of your heart. That means those little silly things that you haven't told nobody because they might think you're crazy. God knows, and he's prepared to give it to you. Those little things that you've written in your journal at home that you haven't showed to nobody and got the little lock and the little key that you can bend up, and you can almost unlock it with a bobby pin. God knows what's in there, too, and he's ready, willing, and able to give it to you. Tell somebody, say, if you delight yourself in him. All right. Uh, if you, delight means to enjoy, it means to take pleasure. Uh, 
or to find happiness in. Okay, if you can't delight him in him and praise him over the last blessing, then perhaps you should stop looking for something new right now and try to catch up on your praise. Maybe you should try to catch up on your worship. Maybe you should try to catch up on a thank you. Does anybody owe him a thank you? Somebody just shout out thank you for something you, you might have missed. Somebody give him some praise over a blessing you might have forgot to give him praise over. Somebody give him some worship over something. You, it might have slipped your mind that he did, but he did it anyway. Especially when it's time to come to church. Uh-oh. Banners. Uh, I can understand if you don't take extreme delight in him while you're at work. There might be a misunderstanding. I can understand if you're at school and you don't necessarily take extreme delight in him at school. And I can understand if you're even at the grocery store in between the chicken and the, uh, and the hog malls and you don't necessarily feel like uh, it's the right place to give him extreme delight. But you will, I will too. Now don't push me. Uh, but when it's, time, when, it's, when it's time to come to church, it's time to delight yourself in the Lord. Why is it time to delight myself in the Lord every single time? I don't care if it's Wednesday at prayer meeting. Every time you step foot into the house of God, it's time to delight yourself in him. Why? E-flat is good too, by the way. Why? Because every time I come into the house of the Lord, I expect the glory to fall. Every time, I don't care if I come for the food pantry. Every time I come into the house of the Lord, I expect for the glory to fall. That's why when I'm on the organ, I push the way I do. That's why when I grab a microphone, I push the way I do. That's why every time I open my mouth, I push the way I do. Because every time I step foot in the house of the Lord, banners, I expect for the glory to fall. Does anybody expect for the glory to fall every time you step foot in the house? Every time you step foot in the house, bring me up in this mic just a little bit. I'm sorry. Bring this mic up for me a little bit. I don't have that much voice tonight. But every time I step foot in the house, of I expect for the glory to fall. I expect for somebody to get a healing. I expect for somebody, that's wonderful, right? I expect for somebody to get a breakthrough. I expect for somebody to get a deliverance. Somebody just holler and say, I need the glory. Come on, holler like you really need it. Say, I need the glory. Now give him a praise right there if you, if you really need the glory. Come on, give him a praise if you need the glory. Hallelujah, I need the glory in every way, shape, and form of my life. I need the glory. Hallelujah, I need the glory. In this uh, particular text, we can see that uh, the prophet, uh, the Lord spoke to the prophet Haggai and told him to tell Zerubbabel and Joshua. Uh, and I have just a few things I'm going to share with you tonight. I'm going to my seat, wherever it was. Uh, the first thing that he told him, do you remember what this temple used to look like? Wasn't it wonderful? Look at what you have now. It fails in comparison. Tell your neighbor, say, take a good look at me now. I might not have everything I want. I might not have everything I need. My health may be dwindling. I might not have all the joy I used to have. And I certainly don't have all the peace that I used to have. Tell them, say, but this is the last time that you're going to see me with this level of joy. This is the last time that you're going to see me with this level of peace. Tell them, say, this is the last time. I feel almost need to take off my jacket. This is the last time that you're going to see me in lack. And this is the last time, Sister Grayson, that you're going to see me unhealthy. That's the first thing you're going to tell me. Come on, give him a praise right there. The second thing he told him in verse 4. Where's Felina? Is Felina here? All oh, right, she ain't here tonight. The second thing he told him in verse 4. Uh, he told him, but be strong, for my spirit is still with you. Just as I promised before, plain and simple. Grab your neighbor again and tell him, say, though sometimes it might feel, it might not feel like it. 
God is still there. God is still by your side. Back in the day, they would say, he's walking with you. He's talking with you. And he's telling you that, he is, that you are his own. Sometimes he has to even carry you. So tell him, say, don't you give up on him. Because he hasn't given up on you yet. And he won't give up on you. Tell him, say, God is still in the picture. God is still in the way. So tell him, say, step out of the way. And let God move. Step out of the way. And let God work it out. Step out of the way. And let God work a miracle. Come on, tell somebody, say, step out of the way. Because God is still holding your hand. Step out of the way. Is still leading you. Step out of the way because God is still guiding you. Come on, now give him another praise right there if you know that God is still there. There was a song writer that said he was there all the time. He was waiting patiently in line for everything else to get out of the way. Come on, tell somebody across the room, say God is still there. If you walk, if you make up your bed in hell, God is still there. When you walk through the fire, God is still there. When you walk into the flowery places, God is still there. When you wake up in the morning, God is still there. When you lay down at night, God is still there. When you wake up in the middle of the day, God is still there. When you sit down at the table and eat, God is still there. When you walk through the bank, God is still there. When you go to the ATM and don't pull out nothing, God is still there. When you go to get a loan, God is still there. To the hospital, God is still there. When you get discharged from the hospital, God is still there. When they tell you a bad report, God is still there. Tell somebody, say, God is still there. Oh! Now tell somebody on this side of the room, say, God is still there. Stop your worrying. Don't push me, Aaron. Don't push me. I feel a death on God is still there. When your mother and your father forsake you, the Lord is still there. When your friends walk out on you, God is still there, Elder Baker. Look at somebody and say, in your old age, God is still there. In your youth, God is still there. All right. <laughs> tell, some, tell somebody, just whisper, don't get too loud. Just whisper to him and tell him God is still there. Don't get too loud, because I get excited. The third thing he said, after he told him he was still there, in, in, in verse 6, the third thing he told him, if I can put it into my own words. He said, in just a little bit, read verse six to yourself real quick. And if you can't, just, to, just don't get too loud, just read verse six to yourself and you ought to get excited after you read it. Six and seven. If we was in a show enough sanctified church, somebody would just got up shouting after reading. But anyway, in verse six, he told them, in my own words, he said, in just a little bit, I'm getting ready to shake some things up. Tell, grab your neighbor one more time. Grab him one more time and tell him, in just a little while, God is getting ready to shake some things up. Now somebody ought to got excited right there. I don't know if 